Okay, the position of the church. Revelation 1, 2, and 3. We're talking about the book Revelation, but we're talking about the revelation that God wants to give you in the season for the end time church, for the season that we are in now. We're going to 80% of what we're going to talk about in this whole series most probably will come from Revelation 1 and 2 and 3. Because that's the phase of what is happening to the church, me and you. For what do we stand accountable to be found faithful or not? And we f will find three types of church more and more and more. They are already existing, but they will come to the fore more, more explicitly seen, outspokenly seen. Or the fruit in a certain way. You will find the church based on the tribulation, based on the, the rubbish from hell that will be exposed more and more in the world. Because of that, you will find a church that is in reaction to what is happening in the world, and that will be a very intensely legalistic religious church and a redeeming of religion, basically with just the laws as a response, as a reaction towards what is happening in the world. You with me? And you'll find yourself in that category, or certain parts of your life maybe in that category. Then you'll find the church that it, everything goes. All facets, even certain things that we went through this year, like some churches would say, no, that's okay, you know, just let it go. A church that compromises, a church that will go with the flow of the politics, go with the flow of what is happening in the world because God loves everyone, you know? And because of love, everything is just okay. And then you will find the true church that is standing in faithfulness by God's grace on the Word. But where is the Spirit that brings life and that you will need to be accurate, prophetically accurate, understanding the seasons of the time, right, to be relevant as a church. Only by God's grace we will be able to see the difference. We found that when we spoke about Moses and the law, we spoke about these three facets a lot in church. The first one was always the law. The law without the spirit. That is religion that can kill everything that is of Christ in your life. That can make you totally so deceived that you will even kill Christ. That's what happened with the Pharisees and Christ. You with me? Then you will find, we will say... Not just the law, but on the opposite, no law, and everything is love. That's lawlessness. That's lawlessness, and that is not from God. And then you will find the law and the heart of God, law and love. And that is love with discipline, a father that disciplines his son because of love. And that will be the true church more and more. May God give us grace how to understand that. Amen. Especially for the season we're coming into. After Revelation 1, 2, and 3, describing what must happen in the church, in me and your life. In the meantime, from Revelation 4 onwards, it's a, a describing for a few chapters what's happening in heaven. And then a few chapters further, we will get to the face of the great tribulation and what will happen on earth. Whether you will believe you're going before the time, in the middle, or afterwards. <sighs> Let's get to that at a later stage. But wherever, whenever you think you're going... For you to be ready. Amen. Amen. Not hide away in the corner in the great tribulation and praise the Lord. God took you away before the ever strong devil took over. Um, may God give us wisdom how we will interpret that part. Then the millennium time also. What will happen in that season and at the end of the day with the new heavens, new earth, the new Jerusalem, Mount Zion, how God's dream will come into fullness and fulfillment also with the marriage of the Lamb. Amen. So we are with the position of the church, Revelation 1, 2, and 3. We spoke about this last week, so we're going to run through. Those who were not here, please get the CD for that or the DVD. Thank you. We talked about Revelation 1, this one. The revelation of the Father, revelation of the Son, revelation of the Holy Spirit. The revelation of the Father, Matthew 16, that talks about where Jesus said, Who do you say I am? Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus says, Blessed are you. Because flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but my Father who are in heaven. Amen. So the Father in heaven wants to give you a revelation about Christ. It's about Christ. But then also the Father gave Jesus a revelation that He wants 
to give to us. So unto Christ is revealed from the Father a revelation that we need to understand. Revelation of the Son, Jesus Christ. It's not a revelation about the Son, Jesus. It's a revelation that He has, that He wants to express. John 1 verse 18, nobody has seen God, but the one that came from the bosom of the Father, He came to reveal Christ. And Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. In the first revelation for that comes from the Father, if you have a revelation from the Father and you come to know the Father, that He will speak to you. You as a child, that your spirit is sensitive as a child to God the Father, that you can hear the Father's voice. Then you will be first of all child. Amen? Because for God the Father so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Unto you were revealed the heart of your Father, therefore you became child. You gave your life to Christ and became a child of God. Amen? As child of God, as you grow, you become a son towards the Father. You will grow. So if you don't grow up in the Word, and as a child of God, you don't get yourself into the Word, then you will not become a son of God, but you will become childish. You don't get into the Word, give yourself a few years, a few months after you gave your life to Christ, you will find yourself being childish in how you try to work with God, and walk with God, and it will not work. And you will cannot find yourself except when you get into the Word under the guidance of the Spirit. Amen. May we grow to be sons of God. Amen. Revelation of the Son. That is the revelation of what did Jesus say. His exact words in the four Gospels and the life that He expressed on earth and the prophetic words from the Old Testament of who He and how He will be. Amen. That is the revelation of the Son, Jesus Christ, that I need to know. What did Jesus say? How did He live? I want to know that. Because that's to me an example. Amen. If I come to know that, I follow as a servant, Jesus Christ. And the more He reveals Himself to me, the more I become His friend. Jesus said, and in John 15, He said, I don't call you servants anymore, but I call you friends. Because, why? Because everything the Father gave to me, the revelation I have that He gave to me, I've shared it with you. And therefore you are my friends. But I will be a servant and if I don't receive, if I don't get into the words of Christ and I don't see the example of Christ, as a servant I will come under the curse of slavery in religion. I will be a child of God, but I'm putting myself in slavery. Christ is the one that set me free. Hello? Hello? I've received Christ, but because I don't grow in the revelation of Jesus Christ, I will become enslaved, and we call that at the end, I will backslide. Or I will just become lukewarm because, you know, Christianity is... I've come to know the things. But there's not this passion, this zeal growing in me day by day, week by week. It's up and down, it's up and down, it's up and down, 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 and a little bit up and what, 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 whatever. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Servant, get into the Word if you have a desire to become a friend of God. Child of God, come into the Word and see what your Father says to you. Amen. So that you can become a son of God that has the heart of the Father expressed through his life. Then with the revelation of the Holy Spirit, Spirit upon us that we will be witnesses. The inner witness, Romans 8 verse 15. Holy Spirit, cry out in my spirit, guide me in my spirit, that I will say, Abba. Amen. There's a testimony in my spirit, an inner witness, and I will be guided by, my, by the Spirit. Romans 8 verse 16. Sons of God are led by the Spirit. Yes, Revelation 1 verse 2. The Holy Spirit bears therefore witness to the Word of God, the testimony of Jesus Christ. That we find in John 14 26. Hey? He will teach you all things, the Holy Spirit, and He will remind you of everything I told you. So there's two things. He will teach you with the Word of God. What does the book Jonah mean? What does Exodus mean? What did Peter say when he said this? What did he mean? Can I see what he said? In all these books that John wrote, or this, that, one guy, that guy wrote, okay, he will teach me the Holy Spirit. But I need to look into the Bible for him to 
teach me. You have a teacher, but he uses a manual. You ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and to teach you. How can he do that if you never get into the manual? I have a maths, maths teacher, but I never opened the book to get into the maths. That's a freaky way of thinking how you can learn maths. But for some way, we sometimes have that freaky way that this is how God will teach me his ways without me opening the manual. <clears throat> That's not one of you guys, eh? Amen. Hallelujah. He will teach you all things. The testimony of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will you remind you of everything that he said. How can he remind you if you never heard it? So if you don't get into the Word of God, the Holy Spirit can remind you of nothing. But there will be spirits that will remind you of something. A spirit of condemnation will remind you of what happened in your life. A spirit of bitterness will remind you. A spirit of, a spirit of judgment, hatred, fear, etc. Spirit of despondency, spirit of negativity, spirit of discouragement because of things that happen in your past. But some or other spirit will remind you of something that happened in your life. Unless you can get so much into the words, the testimony of Jesus Christ. What did he say about life, about me, about you, about all things around me? What did he say so that from my past I will be reminded about what did he say? Amen. Next point. Revelation 1.3. Blessed is the man who reads the word of the prophecy, who hears and who keeps the word of the prophecy. Prophecy is time-bound. Time-bound. Yeah? Beginning and it has an end. It says, blessed is the man who reads, hears and keeps the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Why? For the time is at hand. Because there's just the one season for this to happen. So either you're in it or you're not. Either you're part of the relevant church or not. Either you will be part of the church and you will judge others and you judge yourself in a way that is a curse. Or you will be relevant that what you read, you can hear what it is saying and you can keep it in your heart. But keeping it in your heart means you are living it. By keeping it means you are living it. That's the only way to keep it. Amen? So there's a beginning and there's an end. The words of the prophecy. You will find in Revelation many times, it says, even in Revelation 22, verse 7 and verse 10, it will say, Blessed is the man who keeps the word of the prophecy of this book. So there's the words of the prophecy of this book. There's an emphasis on that, that this is a prophetic progression where it started and where it will End. A prophecy will be fulfilled. Amen? It's not just unending. Like God as the Word is actually unending. Unending because He is the Word. Amen. There's an emphasis on the fact that this specific Word will be fulfilled. And then it is finished. Keep the Word and the Word will keep you safe. Amen? Keep your fears and keep fears will keep you safe. Keep your success, and success will keep you safe. Because your security is in your success. That success will keep you. You will be swallowed up by your success. Hello? And that thing will not love you. You will drown in that. Don't drown in your success. How? Be today, when you dream about that success, and your focus is the success, today you can drown in it. No, I'm not there yet. I don't have the millions and the Ferrari. No, you are there yet. No. But, uh, you can drown today in the dream of that success. Today, how do you position yourself? I will not be kept by anything else, but I will be bound by the Word of God. Amen. You keep the Word, the Word will keep you. Amen. Deal with your fear. Let it go.